can I first invite Eric? Eric, you have a ba background in the West, you have a background in China. Tell us, what, is, what does that mean in today's day and age for China to be part of the globalized world? Okay, well, thank you, Ronnie. Um, I'll be brief. Um, it shouldn't take me to tell you that uh, globalization is in deep trouble. Uh, it's not going anywhere. In fact, uh, we may be, I think we're also going to a phase of deglobalization, as Professor Blanchard pointed out this morning. Um, and globalization uh, in the last two or three decades uh, has had great successes um, and many beneficiaries. Uh, China, obviously, is one of the greatest beneficiaries, uh, but so are the U.S. and much of the developed world. Um, and that's obvious if you just look at the data and how people live. Um, so why is it in trouble? Uh, I think globalization, this round of it, has also had uh, many great failures. Um, in fact, most of the developing countries in the last 20, 30 years of globalization had not really benefited that much, uh, not as much as they should. Uh, at least the peoples of the many developing countries have not benefited. Uh, poverty persists, um, and, and uh, inequality is increasing. Um, you know, China uh, succeeded in lifting seven, 800 million people out of poverty in the last 30 years. But if you take China's number out, the world had gone backwards on poverty alleviation. There's even more poor people uh, after this round of globalization. Uh, and the same is in developed countries. Uh, in America and Europe, um, inequality is increasing uh, tremendously. That's why there's a backlash. Um, interestingly, you know, China joined the WTO in 2002. Uh, from 2002 to 2018, uh, Chinese GDP went from 1.4 trillion to 13 trillion, so huge increase. Um, but the U.S. made just as much money, if you will, in terms of absolute dollar amount. U.S. GDP went from 10 trillion to 20 trillion, obviously from a higher base. Uh, so absolute dollar amount increases is, are, are, are close. Uh, yet, uh, Chinese medium income in the same period went up 7x. The U.S. stagnant had declined. So why is that? What's the problem? Um, and, and also globalization in the last 20, 30 years have shattered many communities. Um, and if you go to develop, in most developed countries, in America, people are opiates, um, uh, they've lost hope. In Europe, uh, 20, 30 year olds uh, are getting on the streets to fight for their pension. Um, so, so globalization has had many failures. Uh, and why had globalization failed in so many respects? Um, I like to suggest that, that this last round of globalization has been run on a universal vision of neoliberal doctrines, uh, which essentially has consisted of political liberalization um, with endless elections that don't produce good leaders, um, total marketization, privatization of businesses, a retreat of the state, um, in fact, I'll let Mr. Liang speak to Hong Kong, but uh, Hong Kong as a, as a separate economic entity in China had very much suffered from neoliberal uh, approach to economic development in the last 20, 30 years that have left, that have enriched the elites but left so many people behind. Uh, that's probably, you know, I see the, the current um, situation in Hong Kong is very much a Chinese version of Zhe um, in, in, in Hong Kong. So, um, what do we do? Do we turn back and say no more globalization, or do we find a new approach? Um, and I think the Chinese proposition is that we need to find a new approach to revitalize globalization, but we have to abandon what we've been doing in the last 30 years. Um, and the Chinese proposition uh, includes a few main um, aspects. One is to dramatically increase interconnectivity among the countries and economies that have been left behind in globalization. Um, and, and in concrete form is in BRI, Belt, Belt and Road Initiative, where China has been in, investing tremendous amount of money and resources into br building infrastructure to connect previously disconnected economies. Okay, improving interconnectivity. 
Second is to reject ideological imposition. Um, I always say that you know, China has um, engaged globalization in the last 30 years on its own terms. That's why it's been successful. Um, it's important to point out what China said no to the last round of globalization is just as important to what China said yes to. Uh, China said yes to the reliant market to allocate resources, but China said no to giving up national sovereignty to political liberalization, to com total marketization and, and the retreat of state power. Uh, China said no to many things. Um, and therefore, China's proposition for a new round of glo globalization would be a reliance, a, a revitalization of national sovereignty a, 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 to give different countries their own room and space to pursue their own paths, to choose their own models. Um, and on that basis, third, is that we create a more networked world. So it's a, it's a, a networked um, way of networked pluralism uh, as opposed to a, a, a hegemonically led universal, universalism. And that is, I think, what China's proposition will be. And, I, and, and it's still a nascent stage. And I think the world should, uh, uh, should be open to it and, and work with China uh, with this. Thank you. Mm -hmm.